Welcome back to the Club 365 channel. I'm just popping in to answer a question based on one of my previous videos where I showed you how to take an email that arrives in your inbox, grab the attachments, and then put those attachments into a new planner task so you know you've got some work to do based on some conditions of what you want the email to be. But I had a question, uh, and it's a great question, from somebody saying, what happens if there are multiple attachments? Can you show me the process to add all those attachments at once to the planner task? So that's what I'm gonna show you now. So we'll just do a quick recap. If you remember, what I originally set up was a, an email arrives in a particular folder to me. Okay, so that's my condition for this waking up. I then say, go and have a look at all of the attachments that are in that email, assuming there are some. If there are none, this will just drop out and do nothing. So notice there it says attachments, plural. Okay, so in this particular flow, what we then did is we check that each of the attachments, so one by one, we say, is that attachment definitely an attachment or is it just an inline image? And that was the condition that I was particularly interested in. If it's definitely an attachment for each of them, what it'll do is it'll go and retrieve it, it'll create a file in SharePoint. So if you want to catch up on how this is created, you can go and watch the other video that I'll post in the comments. But it creates a file, it um, effectively adds some information to that file, and then it goes and creates a task. What it then does, because this is the, the little secret source, is it'll then go and add the link to this particular file into the task. So again, just go and review the previous video if you want to know how that works. But let me just show you now, if you want to assume that this attachment step is definitely multiple attachments, this isn't going to work for you because that assumes only one attachment. So what do you do? If we pop over to this example here, Again, we've triggered on the email exactly the same process. In this particular example, I'm just looking in my inbox, it doesn't matter. Then what I'm doing is one additional action. I'm initializing a, a variable. So just to show you what that looks like, because as I always say, I like to do this and make sure you know which actions I'm using. It's in the variable group here, and it is initialize variable. Now, if I open that up, you'll see I've given it var attachments. I've given it a type of array. That's important. And there's nothing in it right now, it's just blank. Okay, and then we go merrily along our way and we test each of the attachments. There may be one, there may be many. Doesn't matter in this case. Again, we check whether that attachment's a genuine attachment, but this time you'll notice this particular leg is a little bit shorter. So all we're actually doing here is for each of those attachments, we're going creating the file, we're going and update the properties, so effectively put the information into that uh, SharePoint record that we need, but then we're doing something different. We're actually appending to the array variable and you'll see here I choose the attachments array that I created at the start and I add the link to the item that I've just created. So if you imagine over here in cloud, cloud memory land we've just put a link into a virtual storage area. So again just to show you what that action looks like that is the append and that is append to array variable and you just pop it in there and all you're doing now is dynamically for either one or many creating a link. Now what I often do when I'm building these flows, it's a nice little tip if you want an extra tip for debugging, is I like to see what's happening during the run of a flow. So I've got a compose here which really just displays at the end of all of that process what my attachments links should look like. I've literally just popped dynamic content into that compose, so you'll see it's there. Then you'll notice I've broken out the create a task and the update task details, but again there's a slight difference here. So in the same way as we did before, we, we create the task in our planner board, give it a subject, but then we know we can't add attachments using that particular action in planner. So what we do is we say, okay, for each of the items that's in your of our attachments, so it, it will dynamically know that you've got more than one link if there's more than one link. Um, and it'll cycle through this the right number of times. It'll say, okay, update that task details. So I'm taking the ID up here from the create a task. So just to show you where that comes from, when you create a task, you've got all sorts of lovely information. It's this ID here. So update the same task you've just created there. And this is the JSON you're looking for. So all this is really doing exactly the same as it did before is it's popping in an attachment, it's popping in a resource link. So what that will do is it will update the task one time if there's one attachment, four times if there's four attachments. Ignore this down here. I was experimenting with some incrementing and putting some dynamic content in here. But what I'd strongly recommend is that as you build up the array here, you might want to grab some extra information about each file. And then what you can do is you can use that here 
to name each attachment because right now it'll just put a planner task in with four attachments all called attachment but they'll all be different things so let's just give this a test and I'll show you what the output looks like so this flow has run now and you'll notice it's run all the way to the bottom I did delete the action at the bottom because that was not needed and it didn't reference anything so it errored but you'll see we've got green ticks all the way down relatively quick so it, the whole thing's running about 15 seconds You'll notice I've had seven attachments iterating through on that email. That's because there were probably images and etc. If I were to skip through this, you'll see that at some point it's going to go green on the right hand side. And it's those things that it's actually put into tasks. So um, you can see here that what we've got is uh, an array which has got some information in it. So these are my locations. I won't go through that, but just test it yourself and have a look and see what's happening. And then for each of the, um, the attachments, it knows there's two. It's then got an updated task detail. So let's have a look now at that planner and see what it looks like for real. So if we pop to our planner board over here, we'll see we're in the sprints planner again, same as the last video. We've got a new file that was created four minutes ago, a new planner uh, task, sorry. And we've got two attachments in it, which correlates to those two attachments in planner. Now, they have got the same name. That was what I pointed out. You could easily change that. But effectively, they're two discrete attachments. They're just links to files in SharePoint. So just to prove that to you, let's open that one. And while that's opening, we'll go back down and open the second one. You could equally just hover over those files, but you'll notice that they are one's an Excel file and one's a Word file. OK, so I hope that's helped you and I hope it's answered your question. Do like and subscribe and I'll keep doing more of these videos and do pop any comments, questions, suggestions for other things you'd like to see on any of my videos that you find. And I'll see you back here soon.